Hi guys, welcome. Scanlink here and we're off for yet another update video. Uh, other than the Kingdom Hearts video that we uh, did f halfway through the year because they announced yet another trilogy. Uh, Dark Road, the love final chapter released Missing Link, which is now in Japanese beta only. And Kingdom Hearts 4, which we haven't seen anything else since. I uh, need to play Neo Wilderness with you. Maybe that will have a clue. You never know with Tetsu and Nomura, Papa Nomura and all that. But, uh, yeah, um, what did we do all last year? It was the year of rebooting, really. I mean, I say last year, the year gone, you know what I mean? Because this may not come out beforehand, but pretty much went off without a hitch. <coughs> hey, I'll see you there, Lumen. <coughs> Shit. Okay, so it didn't exactly go as planned. I mean, for one thing, the videos did take a little bit longer to come out than I usually would have it intended on being, but again, life, work, and such, and it was also me rebooting myself to get more videos out. But we did get almost every project done, at least all the projects that I had total control over, were done. The problem with Metroid Ever M, this little gem, you know what I mean, big quotations on that. The Maximum Edition Redux mod, I mean, it was pretty much okay to go, I was playtesting it, it was all good by um, Shadow1333, and well, there was a bit of a snag when it came to, ironically enough, the gravity suit. When it's in-game model Samus cutscenes, they revert back to the uh, Varia suit, I'm guessing because um, since there was no actual gravity suit in the cutscenes, it's programmed to use that model. There's nothing that tells it to swap to that model because, I mean, the cutscene model basically just replaces the helmet, which is the same on every model anyway, so that's fine. But in normal movement, it just uses the in game model for the cutscenes, but the cutscene always checks for that model, so it never swapped that model since then. But sometime next year, as soon as that mod is ready to go, we will be getting on with Metro Number M because. That was a redux that I wanted to do, it was my worst let's play on the worst Metroid game and I wanted to have fun and play it but you know my setup with the Wii Remote back then pretty crappy but with the Maximum Edition running on Dolphin at 1080p with a traditional control scheme which works really well with Gyro by the way with a Switch Pro Controller oh it's amazing it, it it's like how you would normally want to play a game of like that kind it makes this game good like being restricted to the Wii Remote is a bit cumbersome. And yes, you still have 8 directional movement, they can't change that. But you can also shoot missiles in third person, which is pretty cool. So, and you don't have to wait for every missile to reload and stuff. Uh, it's a little bit more awkward to use super missiles in third person, but normally you would be targeting something anyway in order to use a super missile regardless. So that's pretty nifty. Um, unfortunately, I've talked about all this before, and the project's come a long way within the last year. It's just I've, that that bit just needs a bit more tweaking and I have asked the creator to message me when that one particular issue is sorted because if that's sorted or if he just makes a separate build of the ISO that just like hard swaps the Vario suit to be the gravity suit I could just swap ROMs and just do it that way and then it wouldn't look very jank but unfortunately for the quality that I want to output I'm holding off until that's sorted in some manner. Another one that isn't fully controlled by me because I don't do any of the editing, I literally just set up the template for him to edit. Master Aaron and I are doing a Louise Mansion 3D co-op. Um, we have already done my redux of Louise Mansion, he's even used footage of that because that was recorded after that obviously. Um, but this uh, 3D co-op is supposed to take place either before, during... Luigi's Mansion 2, because it's Luigi's Mansion 2 Gad talking to Luigi's Mansion 1 Gad and sends Gooigi back in time so it's ready for Luigi's Mansion 3. It's a mess. And, you know, I didn't, still didn't want to play uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I haven't actually played that in years, but it's my least favourite of the trilogy. Um, so we did that instead, because that would be pretty fun. And uh, because of the weird technical issues when it comes to 3DS and connectivity, even though you're sitting right next to each other, it don't like it sometimes. We have bad days, and then when we have a good day, we try to record. But if our luck doesn't go well, we just kind of skip over it, which might take a little bit longer. But to be fair, though, we are two thirds into it, and one more recording session would get it done. So it's not like it's fully out of the way, and we have already started it. So it's like that space for the normal mansion, at least, it's on the tail end. So that's already in place. But it was technically also considered a new Let's Play. 
not a reboot because the, my own Luigi's Mansion was the reboot or the redo. So another thing that we need to focus on, which was the year before, which unfortunately COVID did put a bit of a hamper on that because we did start the project on the original Four Swords. But when it came to anniversary, lock, uh, we were going through the third lockdown, which was like six months long, which was bloody ridiculous. Uh, but even then, it's hard to get people to be in the same group when you're uh, quite far away and you also have different schedules instead of being online and unfortunately you don't exactly have online with Four Swords Anniversary and we would like to have Meza and some Linkario along with me and Aaron in the same room in order to do the last of the Realm of Memories and then me and Aaron can get on the slog which is the Hero's Trial because those are difficult and you don't even like get a chance to pick up berries there's like no rocks or bushes or grass to grind upon just cut it down to see if you get everything like we usually do literally the seeds that you have to upgrade yourself temporarily are in chests and if you die you lose all your berries so it is a very fickle thing especially if money is very low the challenge is to just get through it they are the toughest dungeons in the game and we still haven't got them yet but when we can because that is another whenever it happens thing probably gonna have to use maybe um maybe birthday times to do that sort of thing but the rest of the entire year of rebooting pretty much went quite well i mean banjo kazooie that went well i even covered up all the cheat codes possible and got every single mumbo token i had a couple of snafus but in a collectathon that tends to be the case we did our reboot of louise mansion as already mentioned but we also did a reboot of pikmin because it's just easier to improve your score on that and i don't exactly intend on going back to pikmin 2 unless it's pikmin 2 kaizo which we talked about at the end of my what's the trust test video right before this uh because we were talking about current stuff that still needs doing yes luigi's mansion 3d co-op still needs doing but that's part of the year of rebooting segment which is what this is and that's why i'm talking about it uh, the problem is with pikmin i lost a lot more pikmin due to the fact that they void out and get crushed because it's just more prone to happen on the wii version which is a little bit annoying and i didn't do a test playthrough on the wii version i knew what i needed to do so i just needed to do it i just needed to get on the grind and of course at the end of the year we finished off with spyro 4 which did, did well the, the first phase of the final boss as well as Thieves Den, uh really gave me a run for my health and the final project that we have that is still kind of been working on for quite a while as my first true proper 3D Let's Play, but I guess Luigi's Mansion 3D is a little bit easier because Aaron edits that, is uh, Majora's Mask 3D. And as you know, it takes a lot of editing. It takes a lot of time just to get one of those videos out. And even then, the planning that's gone into it, similar to a hat in time, but a lot more meticulous in the planning because you have less time than you do in the N64 version plus playing the N64 version which I have to do basically in one sitting if I don't want to use an hour statue for a quick save. We've got past Stone Tower Temple it's basically just clean up now which is mostly the Anju Cafe quest but I'm going to be doing other stuff along with that to crunch it down because remember I'm doing this in the most optimal amount of um, cycles possible and we've basically got two more cycles obviously for the Anju Cafe quest but then you have to do it again to get the other stuff like depending on which route you take like do you give the, the pro email to the postman or do you give it directly to madame maroma yourself that in itself is one split uh but you know we have to go through both of those in order to actually get it done and then once we've got all that done we can go into the moon and that'll be it as i said once the project the main project at least is finished those videos will be coming public at least once every day as long as i you know not doing anything else that day or having another video come up because I don't want to have two different videos going up at the same time but yeah those videos will be able to come out at least publicly or every other two days because I don't want to overdo do it uh, but you know they're still exclusive for patrons until it's done that's why it's exclusive until it's ready I just want it to all come out publicly it's nice and smoothly and because like after all that effort it's like that's a bit of a break period for me as well it's just when i've been working on stuff throughout this year rebooting for those videos for those projects that i've been working on obviously all that time plus personal life and then work is just you know eating up the rest of my time I've, as i've mentioned i've still got like a bunch of games i still haven't touched some of the games i got last year christmas um i haven't touched neo world ends of you since i got that <laughs> it's just that's that sounds like a travesty but you know i i just don't have the time because i'm doing this and i like doing this and that's why i wanted to do the gear of rebooting because i wanted to really get back in the swing of things since i hit a bit of a slump the year prior which funnily enough the year prior the slump was mostly because the channel did not have much content coming out for it in itself there was some stuff 
like not as much as we like to have had i was elsewhere speaking of being elsewhere that's a perfect segue because now we're into our actual upcoming projects and this is out of my control blame master aaron for this one blame my brother because he won or became runner runner up in the crash for it's about time versus on the super lp heroes and because the person who picked the game won he couldn't have another pick aaron came second so he was able to pick toy story 2 that's the next versus and i've joined in as well because that is such a classic little platformer he put Probably the most amount of effort into that Let's Play of his and all the others. He had a little intro as well right before he had his uh, medical issues uh, way back when, when I was doing one shot. So, but that intro is too great. He put that together himself. It's, you know, he had fun with it. And it was like probably the most, well, other than Monsters, I think his most in-depth uh, Let's Play. And he doesn't even do that that often anymore. He doesn't like make Let's Plays. Um, unless it's like collaborative or if it's a live stream sort of thing. But he does all the editing himself. I had literally nothing to do with that Toy Story 2. And I don't want to do Toy Story 2 because I don't want to like one up him on that. And there's not really much I could do otherwise. But this is perfect. I get now play it. And I also go to go against him as well as Gold League Gamer and a few other people as well. So that'll be pretty fun. Uh, but I've just got to practice. So that will be a couple of days at least. But that'll be pretty fun. So <laughs> speaking of that year the year of collaborations was still going and speaking of collaborations that was also when i was on the nerd herd live quite a while in that year as well because we started up it's our collaborative uh live streaming channel which we're on youtube we archive everything that happens it's basically our name for our group in the uk and we are going to be doing my next uh pokemon let's play project which funnily enough is not pokemon mo like but it will have the same kind of vibe because you can play up to four players just journeying together like in the world everyone has their own progress but you get to see and interact with them like pokey mmo but we're with our own group so um everyone else running about is just extra npcs for us to look at or if it's you guys joining in you're playing with but in this case not the case especially since on how not very stable scarlet and violet are that's what we're doing so when, when we're ready to start live streaming that that is going to be pretty much quite fun um despite the jankiness um i don't know how it will be rendering for three other people on my screen or any of our screens considering how unstable it is but that was like one of the major selling points and i'm like finally this is what i wanted in the wild areas of the previous generation of sword and shield if you just so happen to connect with someone else because it's not like any frame codes or anything like that you can't enter their camp and interact with them it's annoying this is just like open world you're journeying you're connected with these other three people they're on your screen you're on their screen you journey around have fun it's mostly focused on me and Capanaman man because it was Capanaman's man's idea so in a way it's kind of like a miniature pokemon MMO thing but we're doing we're going from gen 1 remade and gen 3 with gen 5 mechanics to just straight up gen 9 if you watch my latest what's interest in this video that's when i got pokemon scarlet and i also got the ed 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 game for ps2 and despite the ugly ish models of the graphics how are you supposed to take those kind of designs and make them 3d it doesn't really work i mean they did it with um south park on this similar generation and it didn't exactly look the best even though it was just basic circles and stuff but you know 3d was the craze back then and if they had better cell shading engines they probably would have made it look a lot better like uh, the simpsons game that's just called the simpsons game not uh, the hit and run gta ripper for the uh, road rage uh, cra crazy taxi clone that came out back in the similar y era of games stamming over my words but you get what i mean um i want to play this i want to experience it and i'm going to be doing this blind i'm not too sure if i want to do it live stream or if i just want to record it but if i record it i'll get it done a lot quicker not that i don't want to be rushing through it but it'll be a lot easier than um editing down a massive uh video um i feel like i would be a lot better recording it that that's my style like I, I do live stream blind especially during halloween if i've got a project coming up i would live stream it because as it's horror themed or if i need assistance i can ask and there could be some cryptic stuff but with Edna and eddie i'm just doing what they do best they're trying to get quarters to buy jawbreakers in the cul-de-sac by scamming the other kids so you know and then watching antics unfold and then running around uh, dodging rolf's hammer of discipline because you live in a cave speaking of horror and 
living in a cave, perhaps, in terms of being shut away from the world. Bit of a weird segue. But after Shadow Man 2, and even though I did the bonus episode covering the beta stuff, it left me feeling wanting. And since I'm still waiting on my uh, Shadow Man Remastered Collector's Box to turn up from Limited Run Games, because the previous, uh, the latest patch hasn't come out until recently, so they're probably being slapped on the cartridges and discs in order to be sent out, so the box can finally be sent off. I was hoping to do an unboxing this year, it didn't happen, it'll probably happen next year, but I was craving something similar to that style, for especially the first Shadow Man game, and what came up was something that all Vikings played the sequel of, and he says good things. And I looked into it, I, as I mentioned, there's a prequel, and ironically enough as well, um, I'll put it here right now, uh, there was a someone actually cosplaying as Alice, from American McGee's Alice, not the final thumbnail, none of these I should mention are not the final thumbnail, once again they're in uh, development because um, I'm, I'm probably missing from these thumbnails because I'm not going to have uh, me sticking out in some manner, but yeah, this looks very weird for something that seems like Alice in Wonderland, it takes place after the looking glass and there was a fire that Killed her family, and Wonderland is basically her men her mindscape. Very psychonauts. But in this case, it's like you go back into Wonderland, and because of the, well, screwed up trauma that she's experienced, it's affected her mindscape, and she needs to go in there and defeat her own demons, technically. So it's very metaphorical, um, but it's like a very twisted version of Wonderland, right after the looking glass. I mean, apparently, it's like the exact same. Uh, original stories up at that point but i guess if you wanted to get there in some form of media with a similar sort of gothic tone sort of thing maybe watch the disney uh so wonderland and then through the looking glass and then you go from that maybe i mean i don't know how else that you would do that because you would just read the original books but then there's also a bit of a tonal shift because it's like swerve guess what you're now like in victorian hospitals and you're having like shock therapy and other sort of bloodletting and god knows what else like I know it's, the game will be blind, I haven't seen much of the game at all, I just know that it exists and I obviously have to boot it up to make sure I can actually run it in the way that I want to, uh, capture it and all that, get all the settings correct. Um, I also actually made the updated original boot in through Steam's version of uh, the sequel Madness Returns, because Madness Returns originally came with the original, because the original was so clunky and only at 480p with bad, like, textures at the time, but it had like a... Not a remaster, but like an updated, like more modern version release that works better with a current gameplay. But now you can only get the files. But if you put it in the file in the folder that Steam makes with Madness Returns, I keep stammering over that, which is why I keep cutting. And then change something in a text file, it will actually re-enable it and allow you to play the original through the sequel, which is great because that's what it's intended to do. But the Steam version didn't include that but you can patch it back in, which is great. And apparently the original game is considered abandoned slash freeware because you can just go onto like the uh, freeware archive and it's there. The sequel gives you a synopsis anyway. And if you check the manual of the original, which is what I did, I brought up a PDF of the original, it gives you the backstory anyway, which is what I've read. So it's not like I haven't spoiled myself. I literally read what was provided to me without even booting up the main game within the menu. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, live streaming that this Halloween. And finally, I want to make mention of some ideas for the upcoming 10th anniversary of the channel. Because this coming year will be the 10th year that since I have started this channel. And I started with Legends of the Twilight Princess, which to be fair, that Let's Play, as I've mentioned before, could use a redo. But that seems a bit too cliche. A lot of people like to redo their first project with the quality standards that you have today i did it with my other but ironically enough my let's plays 2 would have been free and 4 being pikmin uh, metro of m and luigi's mansion but i didn't actually do it for twilight princess and twilight princess is a big game the thing is is that that was structured really well still like it was broken up in a very neat manner and the video links were also not ridiculous um, the only problem is, is obviously 480p through the dazzle, I didn't grab every chest, which didn't really matter, didn't go into every grotto, which again didn't really matter, that was remedied somewhat from when I did the HD version, because I could actually see some of the chests that I easily missed, plus 
the grottos because all the other grottos that I did miss now contain stamps instead of money. So I, I had to go get those, uh, the Miiverse stamps. But they also work as like some sort of compendium and art gallery because it gives you the whole al alphabet of that game's Hylian as an actual alphabet so you can write stuff in Hylian, which I think is pretty nifty. Not many other Zelda games, I don't think any Zelda game does that actually. You can literally write Hylian. Like, they literally say, this is the letter A, this is the letter B. That's crazy. That's amazing. So, the stamps do have worth, despite Miiverse being dead. The only other problem is that the HD videos that I did make, because my Roxio was just having its moment with my old uh, laptop back in the day, kept quoting the footage every time I went through a black screen transition, which really ruined the footage, but there was not much I could do about that. Um, because I don't see it glitching when I'm looking at my TV, you know what I mean? So, and we still had some of that going off, even with more optimized settings. But then, when I got my new PC, I was like, screw it, I'll get an internal Elgato and stick that in. I still have the Roxio, it's still useful, because the Elgato that I have doesn't take component, and how else do you capture a PS3 but with component? You can get uh, conversion boxes, Super Mario has one, but since I already have the Roxio, I can use that as my conversion box. I just have to plug it in via USB, which I think you would have to do with that version box anyway so it's not too big of a problem but regardless i want to do something twilight princess related and i was thinking of a versus because that really would test our knowledge of the game and but i just don't know if i want to go 100 percent or well 100 percent bar the stamps if you grab them fair enough um but i don't know i, I would have to figure that one out because like when uh, Blue Hedgehog Man and I did Ocarina of Time versus we did basically 100% everything except for uh, the 100 gold school tillers. We only had to get 50 to get the heart piece so we had max health. We didn't go for all the grottos that didn't that just had rubbish in them as well because if there was a chest on a map like or physically on the map like in a dungeon we would have to go for but because that clears that off the map but because you don't see it outside like with my original Twilight Princess display, we kind of ignored. So we could either do 100% uh, with a few exceptions, or we just go for any percent and get through the game as fast as possible. So you could even skip hard containers to so skip that one cuts, little cuts in a right, and then just move on, save yourself a little bit of time and stuff. Uh, you can skip cutscenes as well. So yeah, th that could be interesting. And to be fair, I haven't played Twilight Princess in ages, but I do have a Wii U. Pro controller now, so I won't have it be at the mercy of like using the gamepad all the time. Although that would make it more useful to hot swap items, I can't actually do that because of the little uh, dent in my screen that's been there for years. So it's it messes with the touchpad sometimes. It's probably just better for me to pause and just go blah, 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 bing like you would any other time. It, it's not much of a time loss, honestly. So there's ideas for Twilight Princess. I could even do a randomizer as well if I wanted to get that working. But I don't really want to do a randomizer because we've already got a couple of randomizers going on, like Nuzlocke's and on Ocarina of Time in the Multi World and stuff like that. So I don't want, but it's just an idea. It's just an idea. But I definitely want to do something to White Princess this year. And if we were to do a versus, it will be on my channel. It won't be on the Nerd Herds because this is my thing. So that makes the most sense. Um, and it will also be recorded, not live streamed, which again, that wouldn't be on the Nerd Herd channel. That will be here. But yeah, I haven't mentioned a lot of uh, new projects, only stuff like Ed and Eddie, obviously, I want to do. I want to play that, and I want to record or stream it, not too sure. Uh, Majora's Mask is already there in the background, I need to wrap that up. Pokemon Scarlet, we are starting. That's a collaborative thing. The Versus, again, collaborative thing. That's slated to happen, so when you see that come out, enjoy. And obviously, the anniversary is also coming up. But I've also got those other videos, as I mentioned previously, which is like the Hat in Time uh event which ends at march so that's mostly mostly one live stream of vanessa's curse to do and you know whenever we can actually do this little thing uh with the maximum edition that'll be pretty fun as well once we get onto that because i want to show off the mod especially the maximum edition changes and i want to improve what i had done before and much more better like actually have a much more refined route get stuff at the most decent time or earliest time um, would not go back into sectors to just grab a couple of items and then go back in because that's a massive waste of time. Whenever it's most convenient, so I could sweep through and grab everything possible. 
like get the most amount of stuff that makes it easier like if there's energy tanks around i'm probably going to go for that really because since concentrations change uh having a little bit more health actually helps because otherwise you've got to charge up a lot longer. But with that, just a little um, overview right there. That's going to be up for this uh, update video. Basically, we have almost fully rebooted. We on a roll. We've got projects coming. We've got projects that need to be cleared up. Um, and some of the things that I have mentioned are basically, once again, just stuff that's happening on the channel. But it's meshed with all the stuff we've still got going on. But this year, I also plan on as i said almost fully rebooting in this case getting back to some sort of clean slate so i can just be like let's do one project this project because i think my major problem is and i've said this before back way back when with doing like um Donkey kong 64 and earthbound at the same time especially earthbound uh which i think i also had pikmin 2 going on along with something else ocarina of time along with final fantasy 6 when we first started that which i do need to do another bonus episode on that at some point because of the pixel remaster which is getting physical release on the switch but i've already got it on pc which has achievements which are different from the one i already have ah why the bonus episodes keep sneaking up on me and for the one bit of shadow man with the new update has actually added a, a monster in the experimentation rooms in that big massive room with the meat um i'll just splice that in when we're doing the unboxing of the collector's edition because it will have that update on it but yeah that's going to be it for this update video i hope you look forward to what we've got coming up next and i'd like to thank my master aaron for the little skit with this yeah that'll do <laughs> thanks bro <laughs> your services are duly noted <laughs> he's dying <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hope to see you over on the Nerd Herd, maybe on our finale of Pokemon as well, the main finale for the main quest at least, because we're all at the League, so if you've already beaten it, you can join us anyway. And yeah, hope you enjoy the Pokemon, the Zeldas, the misadventures of Ed, Ed and Eddie, as well as celebrating 10 years of this channel so far. Maybe if it's round about the same time and the last volume does actually come out and it's the end even though it'll be the 11th volume i would actually have the entirety of twilight princess hell if i don't want to do the verses i might just read all of them on stream why not just something nice and chill It'd be pretty cool i feel because that would be complete that's not complete yet anyways thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys next time for whatever we have coming up soon see you guys then